Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandagis here on the September 3rd, 2020 with your tropical update. We got Omar and Nana out there in the Atlantic Basin, both falling apart, no longer really a threat to anybody. And we are a week out from the peak of hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin, which falls on September 10th. Here's a look at the basin overall right now. We'll start off with Omar, which is just pretty much a sheared mess at the current moment. 35 mile an hour winds. In fact, it's probably just going to be a remnant low before uh, you know this evening is out. Uh, Gust may be up to 45. Doesn't look really impressive at all here on uh, infrared satellite imagery because it's not. It's very far north of Bermuda, so not affecting any land masses. But what's kind of still interesting to watch here on the visible satellite imagery is the decaying structure of the storm. And what's really evident on this is you can point out exactly where the wind shear is and what it's doing to the system. You can see the low level circulation, that spin in that cloud layer there, and the winds aloft are coming in out of the north. So you can see what it's doing to any convection or thunderstorm activity. It's blowing it off, off to the south here, and kind of dismantling it or separating it from its overall structure. It's essentially tilting uh, the system. What this kind of looks like is smoke rising out of a chimney and then getting pushed by a gust of wind out aside from it. So it's a, a tilted system now. It is weakening and you see it there remnant low as it moves off towards the east and eventually towards the northeast into some cooler ocean waters in the North Atlantic. Now we also have Nana, which yesterday briefly intensified like we had talked about and we had expected up to a category one hurricane. That was the fifth hurricane of the season, made landfall in Belize late last night. And now it has moved well inland. It's encountering higher terrain and is getting sheared apart by not only the enhanced terrain, but also wind shear aloft as well. That's kind of dismantling that storm as well. You can see it here on the visible, the low level spin. You can see evident here off to the north and northerly wind shear is um, separating that convection off to the south there and tilting the system too. The forecast on it, I mean, not much more here. It's probably going to fall apart even further. 40 mile an hour winds and then it's going to enter the uh, eastern Pacific there. Uh, maybe it's a remnant low and if conditions are right, you can even see it regenerate out there. Bigger picture, once again, we aren't done with this season yet. In fact, not even close. We're just over halfway done with the season, and we have several more waves that we're watching that came off of the coast of Africa. Three, in fact, one that has a low chance of development, 20% in the next five days, one that has a moderate chance, 40%, and one that's got a high chance of development, 70% chance of becoming the next named system. That's Paulette, and then followed by Renee. So we have talked about September 10th being the peak of hurricane season. When we look at climatology here, that is essentially the most active point of the season. September 10th, you see that peak there. We are out a week from that. September 3rd, we're going to ascend to that peak. Still have a very active period all the way up through October 1st. And even through a good chunk of the first half of October, it's pretty active before a sharp cutoff to end up the season as it ends on November 30th. So why is September 10th? The peak. We just pick a random date out of a hat and that's what we went with. Well, no, it's statistics. It's the date that you're most likely to have an active tropical system out in the Atlantic. Now, there's two main contributors to this, though. Wind shear, which we talked about affecting Omar and Nana. Well, wind shear is a change in speed and direction with height. Now, hurricanes, tropical systems are vertical systems, okay? Vertical structures. When you have winds changing direction and speed with height, it's going to blow off the top of these developing vertical structures, right? Higher thunderstorms get cut off, right? It chokes off a developing storm. Now, wind shear this time of the year around September 10th is the lowest it is all year. So it's not no longer a detrimental thing to developing storms. They don't have to worry about wind shear stopping them from developing and organizing. So that's why wind shear and also the water temperatures We've talked about this, you know, pretty much since before the season even started. We've been at above average temperatures in the uh, Atlantic Basin and the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico pretty much all year long so far, and it's not stopping anytime soon. Days and days of sunny weather heating up the ocean, and not just the skin of the ocean, that heat energy extends down to a depth of, like we've talked about, the ocean heat content. Those water temperatures are the warmest they will be all year, right around September 10th or so, the middle of September, lagging right through October and even the end of October too, providing potential fuel for developing systems there. So that's why September 10th is the peak. Kind of a shorter video today, not a whole lot going on out there, but of course, as we get closer and closer to that peak, 
activity will likely start to flare on up once again. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on social media or like any of those pages on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and we'll see you back here on Friday to kick off the long holiday weekend.